Good morning, and welcome to our time here for Story Path on the chancel steps. And I have Mrs. Bonnet with me this morning. Mrs. Bonnet has been keeping me company here on these chancel steps for the last couple of years. Usually Mrs. Bonnet and Peeper Sachik just come on out for us for Easter Sunday, but she has been nice enough to stay with me for this last couple of years. But I know that she is ready to head on home. And although I'm going to miss her, very much. I look forward to seeing her again next year. And what a great reminder to have Mrs. Bonnet joining me for this story this week, because it is it begins with the story of the disciples being with Jesus. Those are his very special friends who have traveled with him. They've learned from him. They have learned so much. They've watched so much. And boy, do they love Jesus. And soon, Jesus will not be with them anymore. Jesus will be gone, but the love that Jesus has for them and the love that they have for Jesus, well, that can never disappear. And that is why the story for this week is called The Invisible Boy. The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig, about a little boy named Brian who nobody saw he played all by himself. He was very creative. He seemed to have fun just imagining his own world around him. That was until Justin came to school. Justin was being picked on and, and Brian saw that and invited him to be his friend. And before too long, these two were out doing things together. Brian was no longer invisible. He'd found somebody to value his friendship and cared very much for him. So, without any further ado, let's share together, shall we, Mrs. Bonnet, the story of the invisible boy. Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? Even Mrs. Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. Nathan has problems with what Miss Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball teams. The best players get picked first then the best friends of the best players, then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting and hoping. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, says Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everybody did, except Brian. He wasn't invited. At choosing time, while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at his table doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings. Space aliens locked in intergalactic battles, greedy pirates digging for treasure, and superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. On Monday morning, Mrs. Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. At lunchtime, Madison and J.T. watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's bulgogi. Bul what? Bulgogi. It's Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I eat booger ghee. And the kids laugh. All of them, that is except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. The next day, when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. 
Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian, yum. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing. You're Brian, right? Yeah. Thanks for the note. Hey, Justin, Emilio calls out from the tetherball court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's really cool drawing, he adds before talking, taking off. Back in class, Mrs. Carlotti asks the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm already with Justin, says Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Mrs. Carlotti said we have to, up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio. Let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Mrs. Carlotti gives the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think would live in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. It's lunchtime again, Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout out. Hey, Brian, over here. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. Cookie? Thanks. Maybe, just maybe, Brian's not as so invisible after all. What a wonderful story that was, don't you think, Mrs. Bonnet? I'm sure you do. A great reminder that Justin and Brian were able to comfort each other and to be very special friends. A reminder too that even though Jesus may not be with us physically anymore, Jesus' spirit is always with us, providing us too with comfort and love, a love that we too are meant to share with everyone around us to let them know just how special they are as well. May we find the ways to do that, just like Brian and Justin did to support one another. Let us support each other too. Thanks for joining Mrs. Bond and I on the, on the chancel steps this morning for Story Path. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Subscribe on YouTube so that you don't miss the next story on Story Path.